Laughter really is the best medicine. Because most days I feel like a watercolor that's been spat on by acid rain. And the world starts to look like a set of teeth slowly eating away at everything good. I lost my faith. My favorite philosopher tells me God is dead. And if you think about it, if a dog can be man's best friend, then God must be man's best imaginary friend. And if time dictates that dog gets killed off with old yeller compassion, then I'm pretty sure the only way to dethrone such a vengeful idea sitting on top of a cloud is by pointing at it and laughing. But no one got the joke. So no one laughed. <laughs> Not until George Carlin hit the stage, because every punchline he devised about mankind, all he ever had to do was hold the mirror towards the audience, and they would point back and laugh in full agreeance. Richard Pryor expanded on the idea, you see, he was made in God's image. A self-destructive, foul-mouthed train wreck with more ghosts in his head than puncture wounds from a crown of thorns. He once struck a match on stage after nearly burned himself alive in a drug-fueled haze and called it Richard Pryor running down the street. Gilda Radner was a wonderful woman, but the spotlight was a bear trap, and she was starving, placed on dexedrine diet pills at the age of 10. She embodied a lifelong identity crisis, once telling a reporter she had thrown up at every toilet in the Rockefeller Center, but famously laughed it off as she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and said, if it isn't one thing, it's another. When Nietzsche died, God said Nietzsche's dead. And then they held hands and skipped away into the fading glow of the abyss. When Carlin kicked the bucket, he dropped the mirror. The audience kept laughing because the applause sign was still on, and they failed to realize that they were the trained dogs he was talking about. When Richard Pryor clutched his chest and fell to the floor for the final time, man's image had become so self-destructive the heroes we created wouldn't even save us anymore. In fact, they gunned us down in darkened theaters. Remember Batman? and how you could smell the gunpowder like sulfur from a match when Radner's cancer came out of remission she didn't even have time to say a prayer she was afraid of falling asleep so the doctor sedated her and like a princess in a dress she slipped into a coma Gene Wilder was by her side the love of his life died and his recent movies were a failure if it isn't one thing it's another Nietzsche theorized that the world is an object in which you can either laugh or cry at. Comedians tell the same jokes, but they have no tears left. As individuals, they're insufferable, addicted, and so afraid of their own existence. Blistered, burned victims, callous turtle shells, all in one. But as soon as they hit the stage, they can inspire hope in such a twisted way by making us laugh at the strangest and cruelest parts of our existence. And that's our job, to silence the screams with your laughter. Because life is a joke. Death is the punchline and you have to laugh. Because it's the one thing we all have in common. <laughs>